Yeah. Have a good time. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, subtitled The Inner Voice. And we have a young lady, your name is? Mm. Claudia is Monty. You have a condition that's called? Spasmodic dysphonia, or SD. SD, spasmodic dysphonia. Uh, the medical profession says your condition is incurable. How long have you had this condition? Mm, it started about seven years ago. What happened? Well, it's been a process. I first have, have they said, acid reflux. Mm -hmm. I took um, reflux medicine and then voice therapy, and, and I'm getting my voice right now, which is part of my behavior or mm -hmm. disorder. Um, I had Botox at one point mm -hmm. um, to loosen up my vocal cords or so I could speak. Mm -hmm. Not very well, not with a nice voice, but mm -hmm. I got a voice. You use a TDY yes, now? Yes, yes. What is a TDY? It's a uh, machine that you type into. Mm -hmm. And I t type words, and an operator gets the words, and then she will speak the words to the c person that I've called. Mm -hmm. You also use an electrolarynx. That's I try not to. I, I was given one, though. The, um, the state of California will provide... Um, voice devices for people with disabilities and mm. it wasn't very nice sounding. I sound like Darth Vader when I use it and mm -hmm. it makes other people more uncomfortable than it would make me. Yeah, it's frightening. It's a robotic sound. Oh, it's not very pleasant. No. And you came to see me. Uh, this is your second week. Mm -hmm. This is just a taste of the voice that I recorded. The first session. I've had SD for seven. Do you recognize that voice? Yes, I hate that voice. SD for seven years. On the phone, it's very difficult to understand, so we communicated by email. And also, I believe I might have used my TTY with the receptionist. Right. But... You came in and your voice was not there. Severely spasmodic. Uh, uh. <laughs> your laugh is very normal. Your laugh is your voice. Mm -hmm. You've suffered with this condition. What has it done to you mentally, psychologically, emotionally? It's been really hard. Mm -hmm. It's caused me to be depressed, mm -hmm. very frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been able to work. Because mm -hmm. um, when I do tighten up, uh, I can't answer the phone. I lose business. Mm -hmm. Imagine um, a young girl calling to want to have her wedding done, and, and I go, ah, 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 and that's happened many times, so mm -hmm. I just don't answer the phone. You have a perfectly normal voice now. Hmm. Yes, that's wonderful, but it's driving me crazy because it will tighten up. Why will it tighten up? There's, t the subtitle of the program is The Inner Voice. You have an inner voice telling you what. What is it saying to you? It's not going to last. It's not mm -hmm. going to work. You're going to lose it. What does the inner voice tell you? Right now it's saying, be thankful when I'm talking. <laughs> um, but it's going, why are you talking right now? You know, What is making me talk and how can I control it? Mm -hmm. How can I always be able to have this voice? You don't breathe normally. I mm -hmm. pointed that out, right? Did you realize that? Mm, yeah, I, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And I don't know when unless I'm reminded. <laughs> so you keep your hand on your midsection mm -hmm. to make sure that your stomach is going out when you breathe in. And when you talk, your stomach should be going in. I showed you how to do that, lying down on the couch. How long did that take me to show you how to breathe properly? Not that long, but doing it consistently has taken and work. Where's your voice when you go consistently? Can you change that? I'm working on it. Can yes. you change the, just the way you said it and use it okay, in the let normal me try. Voice? Yes, yes. Bring it up, mm -hmm. and I'm using in my breath. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I have to remember in and out. Mm -hmm. So I used I sometimes hold my breath and right. keep on talking like that. Right. Spasmodic dysphonic patients, believe it or not, try to talk without air. I believe. <laughs> it's impossible to do. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it. Your laugh is your voice, and they take the air in, hold the air, or let the air out before they're talking, or they let the air out in the first second or two, or they reverse the breathing. They're doing what Ripley said is impossible, believe it or not. <laughs> Spasmodic dysphonia is not a unique problem. It is simply an extended voice problem of misuse. And the medical profession has for one reason or another said it's a dystonia, which means it's a neurological problem and it's incurable. You are talking with a normal voice. You cannot do that if you have a neurological problem, as they say you have. So you're disproving the entire medical profession worldwide, all academia, and Allegan, the maker of Botox, which is well intended because they're trying to help you to relieve the symptoms, not cure it. But they're all on the wrong road, in my opinion. They're taking a position that I wouldn't take and don't take because I've reported cures at UCLA Medical Center alone, 15 cures there. I work in, in my field. I'm not at UCLA, any, uh, UCLA Medical Center anymore. I was there for eight years on the staff and faculty, and on the faculty I ran the Boys and Speech Clinic. So these are documented cures. You've been told, I believe, there are no cures of spasmodic dysphonia. Live with it. Is that true? Mm, I don't know if I've been told that. Um, I've known of Botox, mm. and I chose to use it um, just so I could speak. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't told my voice would be perfect. I knew it would be perfect, and it wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be able to talk. Right. Can you talk now? Undergoing a program of direct voice Well, rehab. thanks to you, I am. <laughs> this has been a couple years since I've been able to talk freely. Mm -hmm. What do I people know. say if they hear this voice, the one you're using? Oh, I get all kinds of reactions. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Locked in. But this voice, I'm sorry. I'm, this I'm voice. enjoying my voice right now. Yes, enjoy it. <laughs> this is the voice that uh, Claudia had. You're comparing it to this voice now. Do people hear this normal voice that you have on the telephone? No, they haven't. Mm. No. Who has heard it? Mm. I've had occasions when I've been under um, emotional stress and I've gotten my voice back. Anger. During anger. Anger and, and, and sorrow. Mm-hmm. The inner voice, you've superseded the inner voice, which is telling you that I'm not able to talk. It's an identity. I'm saying that identity is wrong, that you can't talk if you put very simple mechanical variables together. Breathing right, breathing easy, and putting your voice up in the face. Do you feel the normal voice up in your face? Yes, yes. Do you recognize the difference between your normal voice, which is great, and this voice? And how it is, it is heavy. Oh, God. <laughs> That's in the lower throat. All spasmodic dysphonia, Claudia, is in the lower throat. The medical people say it. The academicians say it. I'm saying that's where it is, but it needn't be there. That's why they are mis guiding you in saying there are no cures because they're saying you can't change but obviously you can't change and if you can change obviously it can't be a neurological or basal ganglia problem or genetic problem or acid reflux you tried acid reflux drugs mm -hmm. did it change your voice well not really no mm -hmm. no that is the the modus operandi around the world, acid reflux. There was a study done by Merck in 1992, I believe. They sponsored the study and they found that bad and raspy voices are related, associated, and uh, causing bad and raspy voices, acid reflux. Um, now they're of the view, 
the academic, uh, academicians and the medical people are prescribing acid reflux as a matter of course when you have spasmodic dysphonia. I do not find it very beneficial or meaningful or a related uh, cause. So clinically, I would say 99% or more of those prescribed acid reflux uh, drugs for their SD or for their bad and raspy voices are not benef uh, benefiting from the drugs. But we live in a, a doomy society, and there's a great deal of influence by uh, drug companies. They have tremendous amount of advertising uh, power to persuade us that acid reflux is the cause of bad, raspy, and spasmodic dysphonia. What am I doing that wasn't done for you in speech therapy? Did you have speech therapy? Mm, yes. Well, I'm having um, intensive therapy with you. Mm -hmm. Many speech therapists are very busy. They can't um, help me for two or three hours at a time. They have other patients they mm -hmm. have to take care of. And you've allowed me the time to work at it, not one hour a week. That wasn't going to get it handled for me. No. I needed intensive therapy. Mm -hmm. Five hours a day, five days a week for one month. Yes, and I needed someone to keep me motivated. Mm -hmm and keep me on track mm -hmm. and not distracted. How do I do that? You, you keep me in your office. Yes, <laughs> I'm a prisoner. <laughs> yes, you are a captive. Uh, but I'm a thankful captive. Mm -hmm. You work with another person now in a group. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. yes. Does that help you? A feedback, play mm -hmm. off? Yes, yes. It's um, in, um, here I'm going, I'm losing my breath and I'm going down. Um, she helps me. Emotionally, mm -hmm. and it's someone to um, have feedback with. Mm -hmm. She knows what I've been going through. She knows how hard it's been to not talk. Mm -hmm. Are you dropping now? Mm -hmm. Maybe Can I'm getting upset about my whole voice. <laughs> Can you change? Mom, yeah, I have been. You just um, did? Yes, yes. I have been having a bad days. It comes down now. Can you change that and say, I have been having some bad days in the face? I'm having some bad days. It wants to go down. The inner voice is saying, talk in the old voice. It's You're under a habit. Pressure. Yes. Do you think it's a habit or do you believe that you have a neurological problem? I think it's a bad habit. Mm -hmm. Can you transfer this voice outside the office? The normal voice. Yes. You, it's you, taking work. Yeah. Oh, I've been at work. In at it. Where do you feel it when you say it's taking work? Right here. I was just, and I'm not breathing. I'm, I'm just stopping. You're stopping the breathing. Mm -hmm. The medical field says it has nothing to do with your voice. That you. When I, it's a, a vibration, and I can feel. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a, um, yeah, I can't explain it, a vibration. There's a vibration, there's a resonance up in the face. The same as in my voice when I'm talking. I'm talking up in the face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can you say <laughs> mm-hmm and put your voice up there mm -hmm, in the face? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm -hmm, two. One, two. What is mm -hmm. the difference when you talk up in the face in contrast to you talking in the lower throat? Mm, well, I feel like a, something, something in my throat. In the lower throat. In there, yeah. Right. It's like a, mm. um, a globus hystericus. That's mm -hmm. what the medical people say. It's, it's like it, it's a mm. substance, but they can't find it. Yeah, yeah. At one point, I felt like it was a, a, even a post-nasal trip. Yeah, they say it's uh -huh. post-nasal drip, sinusitis, allergy. But it isn't. No. What do you think mm. it is? I don't know. You're the doctor. You tell me. I love that voice. <laughs> when you go forward, you, do you hear that voice up in your face? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hum the first bar of Happy Birthday? Mm -hmm. Just hum it. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, I'm, yeah, let me think about that. Mm. <laughs> Let's see if I have. Do you feel that over here? 
Mm-hmm. Now just say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where your voice is. Mm-hmm. 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 One. Mm-hmm. One. Mm-hmm. Two. Mm-hmm. Two. You can use the mm-hmm throughout the day. I use that technique. Because to break a bad habit, you have to keep using the right voice. And mm-hmm, people accept as reinforcing them because you're listening, they believe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and talk off the mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm, no. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Do you feel that focus up there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where were you talking when you first came in and when you're talking this way? Where's the, the sound? I was speaking for seven years. No. A lower throat. The medical people say that you're talking in a lower throat because you have a medical problem, a neurological problem, a basal ganglia problem they can't find it, a genetic problem they can't find, acid reflux that they can't find basically with these patients. But they're saying it's silent reflux and so forth, asymptomatic. My take on this whole matter is they're on the wrong road, well-intentioned, compassionate, and humane, but they're on the wrong road. You've had this condition seven years, spasmodic dysphonia. What am I doing that the medical people have not done for you? You've helped me work on my breath, mm -hmm. and um, you spent time with me and helped me move it up. Mm -hmm. into my throat. I mean, not my throat, I'm sorry, into my um, mm -hmm. face. You feel the difference? Mm-hmm. I love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your laugh is your voice. When you laugh, mm -hmm. you're up in your face. Mm -hmm. These are classic symptoms to show that you cannot have a neurological problem, that you cannot have a basal ganglia. They can't find it medically, whether they use CAT scans and MRIs and so forth. The interesting aspect is they're saying, and I'm asking this question of you, that you're incurable. Doesn't that depress you if you meet hmm. a doctor and you, Dr. Doom and Doom and Doom? Uh, I'm just of asking. Of course, yes. <laughs> yes, it's very depressing. Yes. You've gone to one of the mm -hmm. best in ear, nose, and throat, and you had three Botox shots. You got a whisper voice, you got some voice. And that was better than the spasmodic dysphonic voice. And then the last Botox shot, you said, doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. Does this give you a different perspective on yourself to know that you are in charge of your voice and that if you follow the variables that I present to you, talking up in your face and getting midsection breath, two variables that you can... Mm have a good chance of finding a cure spasmodic dysphonia. Oh, it gives me a lot of hope, mm -hmm. a lot of encouragement, mm -hmm. and it makes me feel happy when I have it. Do you feel your voice when you go into the lower throat? Yes, yes. Is your breathing tight when you do that? Yes, yes. So you know your breathing is not working. Mm -hmm. But I said something which I believe is very meaningful for all who have SD. You're not changing as you should. When you drive a car and you see you're about to hit somebody, you make an instant decision to turn, switch, put on the brake, or increase the gas, right? Why is it that people with spasmodic dysphonia don't self-monitor when they're using the wrong breathing or stop the breathing? Is it a bad habit or do they want to get their voice out and say what they have to say and not spend time with the variable, the mechanical variable? Well, it's both. Both, both being bad habit first mm -hmm. and lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. not knowing what they're doing and I'm doing it, then that's the bad habit. That's right. <laughs> There's your voice up there. Mm -hmm. The bad habit prevails. Why? And the key I'm getting to is that you concentrate more on content than you do on process. What I say, concentrate on process, breathe. Believe it or not, folks, SD patients do not breathe when they're talking, and they're trying to talk without ear or reversing the breathing or the stomach. 
which makes it impossible to talk normally. Why do you not concern yourself with the process over the content? This is a very meaningful question. Well, we are not thinking about it. It's another answer to it, I believe. We're content-oriented in society. When you talk on the phone, you want people to understand you. You're not concerned with the process, but the process is number one. You have to concern yourself when you're driving the car with your eyes focused on the road, and you don't take your eyes off. But when you're talking, you're taking your mind off the way you're, you're talking because you want to be understood, you want to say what you want to say. You're very normal in all of that. But this, to get out of spasmodic dysphonia, is to concern yourself with the process over the content till you get the variables in place. So that's what I emphasize. When we go to lunch, do we talk about that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you have trouble at lunchtime talking mm -hmm. in noise? Yes, yes. I had a break too, so oh. when would I really think of process? Yes. Are you thinking about process now? Yes, too much. I need to just relax. I don't know. That's I right. Know. So it's a balance. You need to relax yeah. and you need to get the flow. Mm-hmm. Is there any time when you can now get your normal voice just mm -hmm. naturally, automatically, without doing anything? Well, when I work in the morning, sometimes I notice if I'm working really hard, mm -hmm. and then it comes. Mm -hmm. As I've exercised, mm -hmm. I've loosened my throat, my mm -hmm. breath is natural. Mm -hmm. You're getting a pretty normal voice now. I am. I feel like I'm squeezing. You are squeezing mm -hmm. now, but you're going in and out. Mm -hmm. Why? Pressure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's pressure. Pressure from me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Film. <laughs> the lights, the camera. The lights, the pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. if you have a voice problem, you're pressured. But you can keep your hand on your midsection and monitor the breathing. When you do that, is it easier to talk? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about it though too much. I'm thinking about it. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. No. The process mm -hmm. is the key, but you can't overwhelm yourself with process. You have to get into a natural flow. When is the natural flow easier for you? Is it in the office? Is it when you're with somebody else? such as somebody in the group? Mm, to be honest with you, it varies. It varies. It varies. Right. Situation and all. Right. It varies with people, places, and situations. I'm trying to get you accustomed to these various places, positions, circumstances, so that you can self-monitor. Can you tell the difference when you're in the lower throat and squeezing than when you have a normal mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. Do you have the ability mm -hmm. to change it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like when you're strangled, when uh, you have a strangled strain? It's very tight. I get jerky. Mm -hmm. My body will jerk mm -hmm. and I feel squeezed. No. Can you mm -hmm. say the same thing? I'm having, I'm interrupting you. I'm sorry. No, 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 you didn't. That voice is good when you say I've interrupted. You. It's that's the natural flow. When you're spontaneous, does it come out normally? Mm -hmm. Sometimes in fair situations would be a real spontaneous mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the mm hmm. That's mm -hmm. where I want you to talk. Mm hmm. And then talk on that mm hmm. Can you do that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is the old voice. That's in the lower throat. You can change that. And that's what I'm trying to get you to do. Mm -hmm. But with a natural flow. Mm -hmm. I can talk this way and you hear the voice and the squeeze. Was your lower throat tight when you first came in? Mm -hmm. Very tight. Is it getting relaxed? It's getting much looser. Uh -huh. 
What does it feel like when it gets very tight? Does it give you headaches? Mm, it gives me headaches. And I know I don't get headaches. I revert to inhaling. Inhaling. What is, tell me about that. I will talk like this just to get the words out. I'll talk in and out. You're talking on donkey breathing. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. And, I, <laughs> and that probably made my breath bad. Because I'm so busy talking. Let's say I was talking to my son and I'm trying to tell him something, and then I run out of air, and then I oh, okay, you know, keep doing that. And mm. yes, I lost my momentum and lost my breath. You reversed your breathing. Yes. You cannot talk on reverse breathing. Um, well, I was. <laughs> yes, I know you were. I know. I love your laugh. Yes, you, you were. Yes, I, you created a bad uh, habit pattern. <laughs> I'm Mort Cooper. Your name is? Claudius Zimondi. Uh, this is a small world, and um, you're listening to the inner voice, reverse breathing. Think about it. Are you doing it too? I'm Mort Cooper. Thank you for joining with me on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Bye-bye. Claudia, you were you were diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia, which is a strangled voice syndrome, and you took Botox, you took a lot of different treatments, and it didn't seem to work. And now all of a sudden, you found the right way to go, and your voice works now. What do you, how do you feel about that? I feel wonderful. I've regained my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what's it like not having a voice? You know, you you go through life, you do everything that you do socially and in, in business, at work, etc. And all of a sudden, there's no voice there. It's it's almost like being closeted for a while. Well, it definitely was. It didn't happen overnight, but by the end of my disorder, I was very strangled and mute. But all along, it was really depressing, very tiring. It was exhausting not being able to communicate, and um, I was really frustrated. Okay, so you, you went to a doctor. The doctor did the diagnosis. What was your next step after that? Well, it wasn't just one step right after that. I sought um, treatment from a number of doctors and therapists, and I eventually hooked up with Dr. Cooper. Okay, Dr. Moore Cooper then, and you went through the direct voice rehabilitation program. Now, what was it about that program that really had an effect on you? Well, I worked with him um, intensively. I worked for him for a long time, actually, um, a few hours a day, every day, for a month, and it was the length of time that I was able to work with him. Other therapists, I would only work with them for maybe a couple times a week or where the Botox shots you would have every few months, but um, I worked with him intensively. Okay, so there was the, there was an intensity, intensity, he stayed with it, and he took you through a particular program, and then you got your voice back eventually. But the, before you found him, were you about ready to give up? I was. I was using um, a, a TTY machine. I was looking into a voice synth synthesizer, of all things. Well, <laughs> uh, it must have been pretty scary for you. Yes, it was because I really didn't know what was going on. And once I got my voice back, um, I've lost all these other symptoms, too. So it was really scary thinking that I was never going to talk again. Well, and you, know, you also took uh, Botox shocks, right? Right. Okay, now that obviously didn't work for you. Well, the way Botox works, it's not really your voice. You get a, a whispery voice, and but it's not a cure. Um I have my voice back. This is my voice. Which is wonderful, obviously. And, and the, we don't realize how important a voice is to us until we lose that voice. And I think the biggest problem when other people get that strangled voice syndrome, they really don't know where to go. You can go to therapist after therapist after therapist, but you've got to get that right combination, that right ingredient, that right formula with working with someone that knows what they're doing and can bring you along to where you need to be. That's correct. And that was Dr. Mort Cooper, and that was the direct voice rehabilitation program. Now, you found him by accident, didn't you? Yeah, actually, um, I Googled him, and or the syndrome, and he came up. And I actually didn't go see him right away. I still was trying other therapies, and 
finally had at my wit's end. Yeah. I'm going to give him a shot. <laughs> okay, and then and then obviously it it worked, and that's a wonderful thing. All right, listen, I want to thank you so much for the time, and I, hey, you are sounding good. Thank you. Take care. Okay.